From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar? Yes, just a moment. For you, Mr. Dollar. Thanks. Johnny Dollar. Barney Wilson here. Your hotel told me where to locate you. I'd rather you located that car. All the police agencies in the state have the license number and description. It'll turn up. Well, the sooner the better. It'll take more than a car to prove William Mark is still alive. The dealer who sold it to him identified his photograph. All right, but he bought the car two weeks ago. We know he was alive at that time. In case you've forgotten, Mr. Dollar, the Fathom Five sank only four days ago. That's when Marky was murdered. Okay, okay. We're not going to settle it by arguing. That's why I phoned. It's going to be settled tomorrow morning. You've petitioned for a hearing? Ten o'clock in Judge Campbell's chambers. You're making a mistake. See you in court, Mr. Dollar. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Miami Beach, to the home office, Delta Liability, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Fathom Five matter. The case of a cruiser mysteriously sunk off the Florida coast. I phoned the insurance company's legal counsel and told him that Wilson had petitioned a hearing to have William Markey declared legally dead. Then I rejoined Mrs. Markey in the study. She was tense and on edge, pacing the floor and smoking nervously. I watched her a moment without saying anything, fully aware of her beauty and appeal, and fully convinced also that she and her missing husband were trying to swindle my company out of $75,000 in life insurance. I felt a little sorry for Marky. She must have been a pretty expensive luxury for a man who was going broke. But then I stopped feeling sorry. I remembered that they'd tried to set up young Danny Haynes as the fall guy for murder. Well... Why don't you go ahead and say it? Say what? Whatever it is you're thinking. I thought I'd already said it, and pretty bluntly, too. You made some wild accusations. Not so wild. I've got some fairly solid facts to back them up. Apparently the DA's office doesn't agree with you. Wasn't that Mr. Wilson on the phone? That's right. And didn't he say he would ask the court to declare my husband legally dead? He's going to try to, but we'll stop him cold. He hasn't got a leg to stand on. Well, that's what you're hired for, isn't it? To find some technicality so they can get out of paying off on a policy? Attempted fraud isn't exactly a technicality, Mrs. Markey. Now I'll repeat that advice I just gave you. Get in touch with your husband, tell him the scheme is off, it won't work. And don't file a claim for that life insurance. You'd like that, wouldn't you? You'd just love to bluff me out of $75,000. No, no, I just kind of hate to see you go to prison, that's all. And that's exactly what is going to happen if you file that claim. You keep talking about some scheme. What scheme, Mr. Dollar? You want it laid right on the line, huh? I'd just like to know what you're talking about. And just how much I've figured out. All right. All right, I'll paint it for you in black and white. Your husband was broke, flat broke. I'm not guessing there. I got a report on him from a financial investigator in New York. I knew nothing about his business affairs. That I wouldn't know. Anyway, he thought he saw a chance to pull off a swindle on the basis of the only thing he had left, that $75,000 life insurance policy. So the two of you worked it out together. Did your financial investigator tell you that? Or would you be guessing? Your husband bought a car under an assumed name and probably rented living quarters somewhere in the area under another assumed name. So it was all set. It was just a matter of waiting for a morning when a heavy fog was down. (laughs) You have a fantastic imagination. Meantime, just in case the accident theory didn't go over, you kept playing young Haynes along so it would seem as though he had a motive for murder. And that part was a cinch. He was already halfway in love with you. You also have a rather nasty imagination. So finally, four days ago, conditions were just right. Your husband took Haynes out on that fishing trip in the Fathom Five. He anchored the cruiser and sent Haynes off along the reef in the dinghy. Then he set fire to the boat, opened the seacock so it would be sure to sink. He swam ashore and drove off in the car that he'd bought for exactly that purpose. As I understand it, Mr. Dollar, that cruiser was anchored a mile or two offshore. Are you actually suggesting my husband swam that distance? You mean that's something else you supposedly didn't know about? What? Oh, that report from New York was more complete than you seem to realize. William Markey has been a member of the Greenpoint Athletic Club for years. He won silver cups in the Long Island Sound Marathon swim three different times. I knew he belonged to the club, of course, but I assumed it was more social. Of course he could swim that far. 
That particular talent was probably what gave him the idea for the whole thing. There's no proof, you know. Not one bit of real proof. There will be, if you try to collect that insurance. We'll turn up enough proof to reach all the way from here to the state prison. So if you try to... Will you excuse me, please? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back. I lit a cigarette and waited for her, wondering why I even bothered to come here. I was fed up with it, sick of the whole thing. Fraud cases are like that, messy and dirty. You see people with a mask down and you get a look inside. And you get to wondering if everybody's like that. Wondering if you'd be like that yourself, maybe, if the price were right. And if you are, you hope you never find it out. All I wanted at the moment was to leave the house, wind the thing up, and get out of town. I'm sorry, Mr. Dollar. It was somebody looking for an address. I mean, they had a wrong address. I see. Well, I think we at least understand each other now. Yeah, I'm sure we do. And I can say only one thing. You're wrong. You're completely and absolutely wrong. Maybe. I wish you weren't. I wish my husband were still alive, even under the circumstances you believe. Maybe I wouldn't be on the verge of a nervous breakdown trying to hold on to my sanity. Maybe I wouldn't be crying alone at night. You have my deepest sympathy, Mrs. Markey, for everything you're going through. There's no use at all in trying to talk to you, is there? Not unless you care to tell me where to find your husband. Good night, Mr. Dollar. I left the house and turned down the dark road toward the Pompano Beach Hotel. I'd planned to pick up a taxi there, but after that unknown visitor came to Mrs. Markey's door, I'd made a slight change in the plans. Whoever it was hadn't been a stranger, that I was sure of. She'd been too nervous when she came back into the room. It was someone she hadn't wanted me to know about, and I was pretty certain I could guess who. Evening, Mr. Haynes. Oh, you're Mr. Dollar, the insurance investigator. Mind if I come in? Well, um... All right, sure. You, uh, weren't asleep, were you? No, I was, um... I was just reading. Been here all evening? Yeah, sure I've been here. Why? You haven't been out in the last half hour? I said I'd been here all evening. You weren't down the road at the Markey place a few minutes ago? No, I wasn't. Now, look... I've answered just about all the questions I'm going to, to you or to anybody else. So what are you trying to get at? What's the point? All right, forget it, Danny. Sure, forget it. It looks like you're out to try the same thing Wilson's doing, trying to tag me on a murder rap. And you're trying to drag Edna into it, Mrs. Markey. Oh, she told me how you talked to her last night. And I suppose you've been over there again this evening. Oh, relax, Danny. I'll tell you one thing right now. You better leave her alone and stop trying to push her around. She doesn't deserve it. She's had too much of that kind of stuff as it is. Oh? From whom, Danny? From Marky, that's from whom. She tell you that? I suppose you'll claim she's lying. You think everybody is lying. But you don't know her like I do. She's a sweet kid, Dollar, and she's had a raw deal out of life. Such as? Marky. The way he treated her, things he made her do. Oh, not when anybody would see it. Pin it on him. He was too smart for that. But she told me about it. And there were plenty of times I could hardly keep from smashing him in the face. Oh, brother, she's got you really set up good. What do you mean by that? If you talk this way to Wilson at the DA's office for two minutes, he'd slap a murder indictment on you so fast it'd make your head swim. I didn't kill Marky. Hating a guy is one thing, but I didn't kill him. Yeah, I know, I know. Because he's still alive. Maybe he is. I don't know. All I know is what I saw out there that morning. And you saw only as much as he wanted you to see. Well, maybe so. But I'll tell you one thing. If he is trying to pull something crooked, he's doing it on his own. She's not in on it. It'd be a little hard for him to collect his own insurance, wouldn't it? Oh, maybe he figured to get it away from her afterward. I don't know what he might be planning on, but I know she's got nothing to do with it. She's a great girl. I've never known anybody like her before. No, I don't imagine you have. I'd lay down my life for her if it ever came to that. And I imagine that's exactly what they were counting on. Good night, Danny.
Expense account item 16, $1.90. Taxi fare the following morning from my hotel to the courthouse. I got there at 9.30 and went over the case with Jim Davis, local counsel for the insurance company. And at 10 o'clock, the hearing on Wilson's petition was open in chamber session, Judge A.G. Campbell presiding. Judge Campbell kept the proceedings informal and the whole thing moved pretty fast. Both sides presented briefs and additional evidence was introduced through verbal interrogation. No witnesses were called. By 10.30, the cases for both sides had been completed. Very well. There is no further evidence of fact or rebuttal. The court will make its decision on the evidence at hand. Now, in cases of this nature, where it is requested that the fact of death be established by legal declaration, it has been generally held that the substantiating evidence for said request must be essentially unchallengeable. The precedents of law are too numerous to bother citing. Now, in the case we are considering here... It seems to the court that the substantiating evidence is far from unchallengeable. In point of fact, it would seem that the bulk of the evidence indicates that William Markey may indeed be still alive. Now, the court would be powerless to act even in the face of a reasonable doubt. And the contrary evidence here is a good deal stronger than a reasonable doubt. Therefore, in the matter of the request made herein that William Markey be declared legally dead, it is the court's decision that the petition not be granted. If new evidence becomes available at some future time, the petition may be resubmitted. The court is adjourned. Well, looks like you won, Mr. Dollar. I told you what would happen. I sure do hate to see that kid get away with murder. Ah, forget it. Marky is walking around somewhere just as alive as you or I. Well, we've all got a right to our opinions, Mr. Dollar. I see he's floating around out there in the Atlantic somewhere. That's what he meant for us to think. Maybe so, but I... Pardon me, Mr. Wilson. A message was phoned in for you, but they wouldn't let me in the courtroom. Oh, thank you, old man. Excuse me, Mr. Dollar? Sure. Go ahead and read it. The minute I step out of that office, somebody's bound to start calling... Well, well. What's the matter? Mr. Dollar, the Coast Patrol hauled a man's body out of the surf about an hour ago. Been drowned. So? They got a quick check on his prints. It's William Markey. Now, here's our star to tell you about the final intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a dead man tells a tale, but not the tale he was meant to tell. And thereby hangs the wind-up. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>